Gray. Quiet. Cold. These are all qualities I appreciate about ice fishing. I'm not a sportsman, and ice fishing is no exception. Ice fishing my way requires very little effort or expertise. You sit on a bucket for hours in the cold, thinking about things you've done wrong. You don't plan to change your life in any significant way, but it's kind of nice to just bask in the mistakes. It's well suited for Januaries in Michigan. Hey Google, what's the forecast for the next week? Today in Meridian Charter Township, it'll be cloudy with a forecasted high of 22 and a low of 16. Tomorrow through Saturday, it'll be rainy with lows between 19 and 42. Highs will be around 47 tomorrow through Friday. Winter was mild in Michigan this year. My big question, nine days out, was whether there was going to be any safe ice to fish. I contemplated how that would affect my enthusiasm. Will it still scratch the itch? if there's no ice and no fish? The office had been particularly unproductive in January. I was eager to take off for a weekend to get another shot at bluegill glory. I held out hope that Michigan's unpredictable weather might swing south of freezing for the week. I start calculating things like freezing degree days and radiational cooling. There are six days until we leave. We need 60 freezing degree days to form four inches of ice. 60 divided by 6 gives us 10. 32 degrees minus 10. 32 degrees minus 10. The average daily I take to daily consultations with the Google Assistant and our local weather gurus. In fact, we still have the ice storm warning in effect for the purple darker purple shaded areas so that's continuing uh, ice storm warning by the way is issued when ice accumulations could be over a half inch of ice north of that a winter weather advisory and south of it a flood warning in effect we're getting some reports I've been ice fishing nearly every year since 2013 with the same group of guys I have caught three small bluegill in that time In years past, we'd go and poke a few holes, dip our lines for a few hours to say we did it, maybe set some tip-ups if we were feeling especially eager. Shot up, Ted. Huh? Shot up. <laughs> My friends are all environmental journalists. They write about climate change, clean energy, bird habitats, river pollution. They hunt and fish regular water, liquid water. But ice fishing is a great equalizer in that none of us really try hard enough to do it well. It usually devolves into tossing around a Nerf ball or knee sliding on the ice by early afternoon. Beers and whiskey are involved. How do you pronounce the last name of the dude who paints the stone age? Homie? Is that how you say it? When it gets dark, the guys have brought their instruments and we have a little makeshift honky tonk. I play the wash tub bass, which is a great instrument for those who have little to no musical talent. The fishing is at once superfluous and also a handy excuse for the whole damn thing. It gives you a chance to sit and be cold and admire the gray. Ice fishing gray is different from normal Michigan winter gray, or Michigan summer gray for that matter. Ice and sky combine into a kind of menagerie of gray. There are shades. Typically, by this point, I'm pumping myself up by researching depth maps of various inland lakes. This year, I'm listening to pre-recorded fishing reports. Thank you for calling the DNR Fishing Hotline. This report is updated on a weekly basis. Press 1 for the Southeast Lower Peninsula. Press The report for January 9th. There is no safe ice in this area of the state. 
small lakes and ponds may have skim ice, but no safe ice. Some are chasing steelhead in the rivers. However, above average flows are making it difficult mm. to fish. So, five days out, I have to come to terms with not having any ice. I guess when you're ice fishing during a climate crisis that precedes a global pandemic, it's kind of like the song says. You take what you need, and you leave the rest. Usually as I'm packing up, there's a dried up waxworm still stuck on the hook of my fishing rig from last year. This time, I don't even pack it for posterity. More room for beer, anyway. I want to feel disappointed that I won't get a shot to land my fourth small bluegill, but I just can't muster it. I'm looking forward to hanging around a cabin drinking and picking tunes. The fish were never really the point. We like to go back to cabins where we've stayed before. Fun fact, these particular cabins are where Dr. Jack Kevorkian performed some early assisted suicides. They used to have a great wood-burning stove, but the state has since replaced it with propane. A little less romantic, but it gets the job done. A troop of about 30 Boy Scouts take up residence in the cabin next door. There is plenty of gray to go around. None of us are the wiser that in a few short months, we would give anything to return to a cabin with four other guys, sit around in silence not catching fish, and waiting for someone to name a song we can play. I hope we can get back there soon. <laughs>